3D model, the Titan 2M. Let's first take a look at our blueprint. On sheet number one, we've got our basic shape, which is a rectangle. And if you look closely, our rectangle has the corners clipped at a 45 degree angle. In addition to having the corners clipped, we have each one of those edges that has been clipped has a small 125 thousandths radius uh, present there. Going to sheet number two, we have kind of an irregular shaped uh, array um, for our bolt holes. Um, notice that we have some locations on these bolt holes here. And then lastly, sheet number three, we have two rectangular pockets with some corner radiuses um, and our chamfer stated. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and we're going to recreate this part. We're over here in Fusion 360, as I mentioned before, our basic shape that we're going to start with is a rectangle. I'm going to go R on the keyboard for rectangle. And we have our triad that appears here. Um, the triad is the multicolored lines. And within those triads, we have these different planes in which we can sketch onto. These different planes directly coincide to our view cube up here. Um, for example, this is our top plane. This would be our right plane. And this would be our front or back plane. The plane that we're going to be drawing on today will be our top plane. We're going to draw our rectangle and we're going to anchor it to our origin. So left click on your origin and drag your mouse out. The dimensions of our rectangle are going to be one inch, 950 thousandths. And then I'm going to hit tab to jump between our measurements to five inches and press enter to lock them in. We have some lines that are kind of cutting the corners of our rectangle. So we're going to draw in these four lines. Now be aware that Fusion 360 loves adding in automatic constraints. And we can actually see two that appeared right here. This little T here is a perpendicularity constraint. Um, if, they, if these appear, you can always click on them and hit delete. Now that I have my lines in place, these particular, the endpoints of these lines have some relationships. This endpoint and this endpoint are perfectly vertical to each other along with these two points. This point and this point are perfectly horizontal along with these two points. We're going to add those in using our constraints. So constraints down to vertical and horizontal. And as I mentioned before, we're going to add in our verticals and then also our horizontals just like that. What that's done is regardless of where I move these lines, that point underneath will be, remain in the same relationship with it. What that does is it saves a lot of uh, time and then also prevents a lot of human error um, happening. Now that we have our lines in place, we're gonna add our dimensions in. From our origin over to here, this measures 250 thousandths. Again, from our origin over to this location, this measures four inches, 750 thousandths. From our origin to this location, this measures one inch, 700 thousandths. And from our origin to this location, this measures 250 thousandths. If you made a mistake at any time, you can always come in and double click on the measurement and re-enter the information in there. So now that we have our corners clipped, we're going to right click and go to press and pull. We're going to press and pull this blue area in the center and we're disregarding the corners. We are going to enter in our distance of 750 thousandths and then enter on the keyboard. Before we're done with sheet number one, we have these corners over here that we need to put a, an eighth inch radius on to. So we're going to go to modify and down to fill it. And we're going to click on all eight of those vertical lines and orbit your part so you can see the other side. 
And in your pop-up window, you should have eight edges that are present. If you missed an edge, um, after you type in your dimension, you can always hold down the control or if you're on a Macintosh, the command button to add in more geometry after the fact. We're going to type in our corner radius at 125 thousandths and then enter on the keyboard. Sheet number one is done. We're moving on to sheet number two. Sheet number two has the locations for our bolt holes. Um, the way that I'm going to show you how to lay out your bolt holes um, is, for right now, it's going to be kind of slow. Um, the, the main thing that I'm trying to teach you guys how to use is how to mirror a sketch in this example. Very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create some construction geometry on top of our part. To do this, we're going to go to L on the keyboard for line. We're going to click on the top of the part. Make sure you are not clicking on the triad over here or any of the planes within the triad. That's a common mistake for beginners. We're going to click on the top of the part. And we're going to find the midpoint of this line. And when you find the midpoint, you'll actually see a, uh, this triangle up here. We're going to left click on the midpoint. And we're going to go down to the other midpoint on the other side and release it. Notice I have these two constraints on here. These are indicating those are the midpoints. After you have your line in place, I'm going to change it to a construction line by clicking on the line and pressing X on the keyboard. Or you can always bring up your sketch palette and click on this icon here where it says construction. Now I'm going to arbitrarily set my three points. I'm going to go to create down to point. I'm going to drop my three points in place. Be mindful that I'm not too caught up on, on uh, constraints and dimensions right now. I'm just landing my three points. This point and this point share a relationship. They are perfectly vertical to each other. I'm going to add in a vertical constraint just like that. Now that I have a vertical constraint in, now I'm going to add in my dimensions. I'm going to go D on the keyboard. We're going to go back to our origin because our blueprint is stated off of the datum location. And we're going to dimension this first point here at 2 inches, 125 thousandths, and then enter. We're going to repeat that for this point at exactly 2 inches. Once we have our horizontal measurements in, we're going to add in our vertical measurements the same exact way. This first one is at 350 thousandths. Second one is at 975 thousandths. And the last one here is at 1 inch 600 thousandths. Okay. Now that we have our three points in place, they are black in color, meaning they're fully constrained. We are going to mirror these three objects across that construction line. We're going to go to Create and down to Mirror. We're going to select these three objects. We're In our pop-up window, we are going to select the mirror line as our construction line and then press OK. This is a useful technique, especially if you're dealing with customers. Customers love to make revisions. Say, for example, I had a customer come in and they wanted to change this uh, bolt hole array. And instead, they want this measurement change to inch and a half. I can come in here and edit my sketch to inch and a half. And both those points will, will mirror across and dimension correctly. I'm going to put that measurement back to two inches. And we're going to finish our sketch. Now that we have our points in place and they're properly dimensioned, I'm going to go H on the keyboard for hole, or you can always go to create down to hole. We're going to click on all six points here, selecting the geometry for those. And then in our pop-up window, we're going to choose some of these, uh, these icons here. The whole type is going to be a countersunk because we're going to actually put a slight little chamfer on the end of our threads. Whole tap type is going to be tap for threads. We are going to have 
the thread offset be full. And then our drill point, we are using a uh, an angled drill bit to create this the, the whole feature here. Underneath, we have our pictogram. Um, and this would be like a cutaway example of what the hole is going to look like. And our first measurement here is the actual depth of our threads. According to the print, it says that these threads need to be 375 thousandths. So I'm going to type that number in. The chamfer diameter needs to be 275 thousandths. And that needs to be at 45 degrees or 90 degrees included. An included angle is from side to side, whereas a regular angle is just from that theoretical center. The drill bit angle, we're not really concerned about this, but the vast majority of drill bits will have a 118 degree included angle. Coming down, our size, we're gonna use the decimal equivalent of quarter of an inch, which is 250 thousandths. Our designation is gonna be quarter 20. And our classification of fit is going to be class 2B, which is a mid-fit. And we're ready to press OK and lock this into place. At any point, if you ever make a, an error, you can go down to your history markers down here and right-click and edit those features and type retype this information in. Now we have our holes in place and we got a, our chamfers. We're going to move on to sheet number three. Sheet number three is putting in our two rectangular pockets. This time, instead of us mirroring as a sketch, we're going to mirror as a solid body. To do this, we're going to go L on the keyboard. We're going to click again on the top of the part. Do not click on your planes here. I'm going to draw in some lines. These lines I'm going to put in purposely at an angle. Fusion 360 loves to add some automatic constraints. And as you can see, they indicated that those two lines are parallel to each other. I'm gonna click on the parallel constraints and then hit delete. I'm gonna go up to my constraints and go down to vertical and horizontal. And I'm gonna say that these lines are perfectly vertical to the part. Now that I have my lines in place and they are perfectly vertical, I'm going to add some dimensions in, referencing again off of our origin. This first endpoint is at 500 thousandths, and then the second endpoint is at 1 inch 500 thousandths. After we have our geometry in place, we're going to right click, press and pull. I'm going to choose this area inside of those two lines, and we're going to move that down. 400 thousandths. And if I orbit my part, you'll notice that that slot has appeared for our, our pocket. As I mentioned before, this particular feature, we are going to mirror it as a solid body. To do this, we're going to go up to construct and down to midplane. We're going to choose the outermost portion of the faces on our part. And what this does is regardless of how thick or how long the part becomes or how thick the part becomes or how wide the part becomes, it is always going to have our construction geometry exactly in the center. We're going to press OK. We're going to go to Create and down to Mirror. And our pattern type, we're going to choose Features. And then it's asking what objects are you going to pattern? Well, I'm going to go down to my history markers in the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to click on the extrude, which made up that feature. My mirror plane, I'm going to select that and choose the plane over here. And then press OK. I can turn off the visibility of my construction plane by hitting the eyeball. And we have our two pockets now. If you look at the blueprint, this vertical edge on the inside of our pockets here has a small little corner radius. We're going to go to modify and down to fill it. We're going to click on all eight of those vertical lines. 
and we're going to orbit the part around so we can see all of them. And our dimensions, as I stated before, are going to be 20 thousandths of an inch. And then enter. And notice if you zoom back in, you've got a little radius there. Almost done with this part. I always save our chamfers for the last. Um, this is a, a good technique, um, especially when we get into programming, because you can always suppress your chamfers and it doesn't affect your part. We're going to go to Modify and down to Chamfer. I'm going to click on the geometry that makes up the outer portion of that square, the geometry that makes up this kind of irregular shape on both sides, the top of these ledges here, and then the bottom of our part. The distance we're going to chamfer this will be at 10 thousandths. Notice our chamfer type is equal distance, which is 45 degrees, and then press OK. This is a good opportunity. Double check your blueprint, double check your part, make sure that you have all your dimensions in place. And this concludes the tutorial on how to make the Titan 2M.